sense of hope, the solitude of fear. Legs will hold you close, but never hold you near. Your grin of understanding hangs like flowers in her hall. And her life seems so demanding, she's just gone out with it all. She's given up on love for coffee and TV. This week, we're staying in the UK. To Cheshire we go, to a wee gorgeous village of Ashley. Ashley is famed for its farmland and has a big farming community with glorious green fields everywhere. It is picturesque. We're going to meet Alex Roder. Alex is a 15-year-old schoolboy with a big, bold, bubbly personality a true free spirit, very proud and open about being gay, came out to his family and friends at the tender age of 13, so we can add bravery to his list of positivity. Now, Alex has an abundance of mates, proper tribe who adore the bones of the boy, plus he's known far and wide through his social media posts, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. Funny and flamboyant do anything to make his mates laugh, so it's no surprise when he tells his mates he's met someone. What is a surprise is who? Matt Mason. We'll just call him Mason from now on. He's 18 and is an apprentice mechanic who still lives with his parents in their millionaire farmhouse on their farm in the neighbouring town of Ollerton in Knutsford. Now Mason has been in the same year at school as some of Alex's girl mates. They live nearby each other, so it's no surprise he pops up a lot, as we know our Alex likes posting funny, happy clips. Hey guys, so I'm back with another video. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a daily life in Alex Rodder. Just Hi. chilling. I've never had See you later, guys. That's going to be my video. clearly likes what he sees. So he hits Alex up with a friend's request, which Alex accepts. All very innocent at first, but within a few weeks, it gets a bit steamy between the two. Mason starts sending him flirty, dirty pics through Snapchat, securing the knowledge Snapchat deletes and pixelates pics, so he thinks only Alex would ever see these. But Alex, being clued up with social media, saves them, which in time will change everything. Remember, Alex is only 15 years old. The legal consent in Britain is 16, so this is illegal and classed as grooming. Alex's mates become concerned. Like I say, a few of them were in Mason's class at school and they tell Alex there was never any inkling Mason was gay. Like, nothing at all. In fact, they're almost sure he has a girlfriend. So Alex checks Mason's Instagram and sure as fate, he does have a girlfriend of two years. Alex is pretty hurt by this and doesn't really know what to do. So he messages Mason and gives him the chance to tell his girlfriend about him or he will. The weekend passes and Mason's not told her, so Alex takes matters into his own hands and messages her. He asks if she's Matt Mason's girlfriend, to which she replies, yeah. He then goes on to tell her that Matt Mason has been messaging him flirty messages, pics and videos for the last three or four weeks and even came round to the house to pick him up but his dad was in and he wouldn't let him go so he never met with him. He doesn't think it's right that she doesn't know and leaves it with, I just thought you should know before Matt makes any head moves. Obviously, this is all Mason's nightmares come true. He contacts Alex, asking why he's told his girlfriend, and Alex is like, look, she loves you and needs to know, basically trying to tell him, 
what you're doing isn't fair on any of us. Mason tries to convince her that it's BS, but she ends the relationship, although stays on speaking terms with Mason. Mason is raging, as is Alex. He begs Alex to stop, but Alex, being a very honest, open boy, wants people to know and tells him, if you don't come clean, I'll put your dick all over social media. The very next day, Mason begins bribing Alex with money, saying I'll give you 50 quid to shut up. Hush money, basically. This is also classed as grooming. Now, Alex being only 15, 50 quid is a lot. So he accepts, and the bribes just keep coming. It's not like he gives him money to keep him quiet and that's the end of the whole thing. Oh no, this is effectively for silence and to keep the relationship going, which is now turning into something very sinister indeed. But Mason has other sinister things going on in his head. By the 12th of December, these payments have amounted up to roughly 2,000 quid. Mason knows he can't keep doing this, so hatches a plan. He texts Alex saying he wants to take him out to a special place in a field. Alex is like, what's special about a field? As always, Alex shares this with his friends on a FaceTime, who all say, Alex, don't go. There is nothing special about a field. It just sounded dodgy AF. Now it's important to note that one week previous to this, Alex's mum Lisa has been out shopping. When she comes home, the door's unusually locked. So she unlocks it, gets in, and sees a pair of worky boots at the foot of the stairs. She starts up the stairs when Matt Mason appears at the top and they lock eyes. Her blood immediately runs stone cold. She's never had this feeling before. Alex appears behind Mason And he explains to his mum that Mason is just a friend that's just dropped by to say hello. To which Lisa's like, okay, is he leaving now, Alex, yeah? Alex is like, yeah, mum, he's going now. The second the front door closes, Lisa tells Alex, stay away from that boy, there's something seriously not right with him, Alex. The fear she felt was overwhelming. At around 5.45 on the 12th, Alex leaves home with his mum calling over. Bye Alex, I'll see you later. Alex then shouts back, yeah mum, bye, see you later. Lisa presumes it's one of Alex's girlfriends picking him up and has no idea at this point it's Mason. A neighbour's security camera catches the moment Alex leaves his house and gets into Mason's car. Later that night, at around 9.20, Lisa's been out for a meal and tries to call Alex to let him know she's on her way home. At first it goes on to answer machine, which is nothing unusual for Alex and he'll usually call back to you pretty quickly, but he doesn't call back at all. She calls round Alex's friends, but none of them are with Alex and they tell her Mason picked him up, they were going for a meal. As you can imagine, Lisa's heart drops to the pit of her stomach. Now in a panic, in fact, petrified, she tries calling Mason. No answer. It's now 10pm and some of Alex's friends have come round to Lisa as they know how distraught she is and they're worried too. Lisa texts Mason the following. Answer your phone. It's Alec Rhoda's mum. I'm going to call the police. He calls her pretty quickly after this. He tells Lisa... I dropped him off at 6 at Holmes Chapel. He was meeting mates. This is a train station, one that takes you to the neighbouring city, Manchester. Lisa's not buying it and tells him, You hurt my boy. I'm calling the police. This is when assholes, ass, totally collapses. He goes to Alex's body to try to get him into his car for disposal. He gets him as far as the footpath but he can't lift Alex into the car. He's over six foot and he's a heavy boy, so he just leaves him there. Please then leave a message on his phone. It reads, Matthew, can you please contact Cheshire Police in regards to your friend Alex? They get no response either. 
The following morning, at around 7.30, Alex's body is found by refuse collectors, partially clothed. Paramedics will try in vain to revive him, but he's gone. The police go and notify Lisa and Adam. Adam goes to identify his body. He is that unrecognisable. His dad has to look at his feet to make sure it's him. The police get Alex's friends in to try to piece together what's led up to this. What was Alex doing? They tell them everything about Matt Mason and the money, the special place. The hunt is now on for Matt Mason. They're able to track Mason through a black box that's been put on his car for insurance purposes. They find him on the A41 in Stafford, heading towards Telford. He doesn't stop. They have to do what's called a T-pack, which means tactical pursuit and containment. They basically surround his car with police cars. Twice they shout for him to get out his vehicle. He doesn't. So they smash the window and drag him clean out. In the boot, they find a bin bag which contains Alex's jacket, Mason's blood-stained green fleece and a foot-long wrench still covered in blood. His hands and fingernails still have dry blood on them too. They also find a bladed weapon, which is an offence in itself. He cites self-defence straight away, says they got into the forest and start arguing about the hush money and that Alex hit him first. So our beautiful, bubbly, caring Alex hit him and he just so happened to have a foot-long wrench by sheer accident down his trousers. This means he's going to put the family through a horrendous trial. The autopsy results will find that Alex was struck 15 times around the head and upper body. One of the blows was so hard that it cracked Alex's skull and fragments had embedded into his brain. There were scratch marks found around Mason's waist, which the family thinks suggest Alex was in a vulnerable position on his knees when Mason attacked him. Police found a cigarette butt near the body, which means he stood there smoking after the event. And if we're to believe Mason's words, he was still breathing when I left him, which also suggests he stood there smoking while Alex was dying and never thought once to call for an ambulance. Because of all the data recovered on Mason's phone, which included Google searches dated the 6th of December for how to poison someone, missing people never found in Cheshire, and how to push someone down the stairs. Joined with all the messaging between Alex and his friends, plus the luring of Alex to the field, the prosecution are able to prove premeditation. Matthew Mason is sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum of 28 years to be served before the possibility of parole. Judge Everett will say, I sentence you for the murder of a 15-year-old boy, something I think you will never, ever understand. He will appeal this decision and his sentence is reduced by two years. The appeal court took into account his age at the time of the offence and the fact he'd never been in trouble before. Alex Rhoda was laid to rest on the 25th of January 2020 with all his friends and family, even people that barely knew him, all came to say goodbye to this beautiful spirited boy taken so remorselessly. So, do you think it's fair of the appeal court to take two years off? Or should he have got longer than 28 years even? Let me know in the usual place. Right then, I appreciate you come to see me. Thank you so much. This is my wee time out. So remember, 
Be kind to the person beside you. We're all human. Unless, of course, the person beside you is Matthew. Your grand love understanding Hangs like flowers in her hall And her life seems so demanding She's just gone out with it all